again everyone want to do a video today on a few things um, those being know your numbers what we use to track our numbers how I organize our paperwork and some of the things that you can use as a tax write-off in this business as a, in trucking or expediting first thing I want to talk about which is probably one of the most important things if you don't listen to anything else we say, I really hope that you listen to this and take this advice. When you get into this business, like Jason talked about in his last video, you're an independent contractor. You, even if, it, whether you buy your own truck and you're your own owner operator or you work for an owner, you are still an independent contractor and you are running a business. Just because you work for an owner does not mean that you're not running a business and you need to know your numbers. You need to have a system in place to track those numbers. You can't be successful in any business, no matter trucking or whatever kind of business you're in, unless you know your numbers. And how do you know if you're being profitable if you're not tracking your numbers? Any business tracks their numbers. They have a P&L, profit and loss statement, and they know what they're making and what they're paying out in expenses and that is the most important thing like I said that you really need to do when you get into this business when we first started out in this I knew we needed to track our numbers I've been a manager before in a vision center I knew that I've done paperwork I worked on P&Ls um, for several years and the business part of me knew that I just didn't know how to do that in the trucking industry. Um, There's several things I tried for probably the first few months. I didn't really track anything, even though I knew we needed to, I was saving paperwork. I knew I had to save receipts. I knew, you know, I needed to save our settlement statements. I just didn't have a system in place to actually track those numbers. And it took me a little while to get one that I'm happy with. So we all know paperwork can be tedious and I wanted something that was simple and easy and told me exactly what I wanted to know. So it took me a while to find something for me to track our numbers that's designed specifically for the trucking industry. A couple of the things I just want to talk to you about that I tried before I found what we use now and I'm going to show you what we use now. So when we first started out, um, we went to our orientation at Panther. They had some people come in called Equinox. They're an accounting firm. They do truckers, taxes, bookkeeping, things like that. You know, no matter how you want to do your paperwork and know your numbers, that's up to you. You can do it yourself. There's accounting programs. There's even accountants and you may have your own personal accountant that, that does it. It doesn't matter how you do it. The most important thing is, is that you do it. But one of the things, like I said, we started out with Panther. Equinox came in. It's an accounting place. You can send all your paperwork to them and basically they track it for you and make you a P&L. Well, when we first started doing that, that was fine. But I started thinking to myself, I was like, you know, this is ridiculous. Why am I paying these people 25 to $30 a month when I'm really still doing all the work myself? I'm getting the receipts, I'm filling out their forms and sending it to them. And all they're doing really is plugging it into a software program that they have there. So we canceled them. Then we decided to buy the QuickBooks program. QuickBooks is a great software program. It's a great accounting program. A lot of people use that. And you know, if you're really computer savvy, then it's probably works great for you. The problem with that being is it does cost a couple hundred dollars. It's not cheap. It is expensive if you can get it set up, but it's not trucking specific. You have to set it up for your specific needs. And I tried doing that and I got it somewhat to what we needed, but I just wasn't happy with it. It just seemed very confusing to me. It wasn't simple. I'm all about simplicity. I want something that's easy and simple. And that just wasn't it. So after the QuickBooks, I decided I was going to um, set up an Excel spreadsheet on the computer through Excel, which is great. That worked for a little about two the first two years once I got that set up I, that's what I was using the problem with that is I didn't have it set up to track our expenses so 
it tracked everything, our money we were making, our profit, deadhead, you know, all of the loaded miles, everything like that I had set up, fuel, but I didn't have it set up to track expenses. I could have put that in. The problem with the Excel spreadsheet that I found is it just wasn't give, giving me a simple, accurate description of what we were making, what we were making per mile. You know, I wanted more, more information on what we were making. So a few months back, Jason came to me. We listened to the trucking radio on Sirius. And Jason was telling me about this program. He had been hearing on Kevin Rutherford's show. If any of y'all listen to him, you probably have heard it too. Called Profit Gauges. Well, he kept on coming to me. And I was like, no, no, you know, I don't want to pay somebody to do it. We can do it. We can do it. Well, finally, I gave in. And we tried the Profit Gauges. And I am so mad that I didn't try this sooner. I really wish we would have tried it sooner because it is so simple. It is geared for trucking it's set up for trucking it's very easy to set up and I wish that I had started this three years ago when we started in trucking because it is it's amazing I'm excited that we started using this program you know we're not endorsed by Kevin Rutherford's program private gauges anything like that I just want to share with you the tools that we're using that make our job easier and hopefully it can make your job easier and like I said you don't have to to use this program I just want to kind of show you do a little brief little summary of it and show you kind of how it works and I will leave links in the description box below to the website that you can look at your look at the program yourself there's also I'll put a link in there that there's a tutorial that he has a video tutorial that goes in a little bit more in depth. I don't want to go all in depth because you can watch the video that he actually has on the website to get more information. But I do want to kind of show you a little bit how it looks like. So let me get the camera here onto the computer and I'll show you a little bit um, how it so, works. I want to show you how you get to their website. So what you're going to do, I've already got it pulled up here. The name of the website is letstruck.com right up here. When you bring that up, it's going to bring you up to this home page. It has a bunch of different options on here. It's got the services they provide, some solutions, events, store, audio, radio. What you're going to do when you are going to sign in for an account or sign up for an account, you're going to go over here to where it says login. When you click that, it's going to bring up a, a screen that looks like this. It's going to say sign up for Let's Truck. So Basically, you're just creating an account. Now, it is a free trial for the first 30 days, and then after that, it's $19 a month. They do have some other options that you can sign up for as well. The one that we're signed up for is basically, I'm just paying to use the program and I'm entering everything myself. So this is pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna fill out all the information and then you're gonna create an account. account created. It's gonna give you the option to pick from three different types of services they have. They've got $19, $65, and $95 a month. We use the $19 uh, service a month. And this list, it kinda of tells you everything that's included. You can look through that. Um, the $19 a month, again, is the one we use. That's basically, I'm just using their program and I'm inputting all of our information into that. The, it has the profit gauges with tax services. Looks like they do, with that, they do your quarterly and federal taxes. And then they've got the full service accounting, which looks like they do everything for you. But again, I'm just talking about this one today because this is the one that we use. Everything set up and you've chose the option that you want to do. You're going to go to gauges and profit and that is going to bring up the profit gauges. This is where you're going to enter in your settlement statement, your expenses, all of your numbers are going to go into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you how to set up your settlements. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit settlements. You're going to you're going to ask you for a date. I'm just going to pick a date. Let's just say December 25th. Carrier, we're going to add a new carrier because we don't have anything in here, and we're going to put Panther and add. 
So anytime you get a settlement statement for them, that's where you're going to come and put it in. So you want to set this up geared to how your settlements are set up. Um, ours are set up. We're going to add new for the first thing you're going to do is the income. That's your line haul, deadhead, fuel surcharge, anything that you get paid income is going to go here. And the way to set up that, you're just going to click the drop down men, uh, little arrow, add new, and then we're going to put in here, let's just put line haul and add. Once you've got that, then you can add your numbers here. And I'm just going to put some random numbers. Let's say our line haul for this settlement statement was $3,500. So we've got that. Next, you're going to add, we're going to add deadhead because that's income. So we'll put deadhead. And we're going to add that. Let's say our deadhead amount we got paid for this week was $800. So when you're setting this up, basically you're just going to keep doing that. You add the categories that coincide with your settlement statement for income. Next section you have is reimbursements. This is anything that you are reimbursed for. Now for us, the really the only reimbursements that we have is if, say, something we needed to get something done to the truck and we paid for that out of our pocket and we're getting reimbursed from our owner then that's something that we would put in this reimbursements um, section here so let's just say let's say we got a pm service done it was late in the evening we didn't want to call our owner for a com check so we paid for that and they're paying us back on this settlement so i would add again a new category it's a subcategory name so we're going to do PM service, add, and then we would add, let's say it was $250. So we're going to add that in. And again, you would go down the line for that and add each thing that you need to there. The next category is expenses. This is where you're going to put in any of your expenses that you had to pay out. Um, for instance, um, any insurance that you pay. We, we pay a limited liability. We pay occupational insurance. That's an expense that we are paying out of our, our check for that week. So again, we'd add a new or a new category. Select category. We're going to do occupational insurance. So this has a whole list of categories that you can pick from here. So we're going to pick insurance because I'm going to put occupational insurance. Then we're going to do occupational insurance. I'm abbreviating because it doesn't allow you to type the whole thing out and I'll know what this is. So occupational insurance, add, and let's just say that was $52 for that settlement statement. Oops, go back there, $52. So we've got that added in. Um, again, let's say we want to do our limited liability insurance. We're going to go back down here, or let's let's do this. Let's do a fee. Say you're doing your uh, fee for your fuel tax. So we get charged. Panther does that, figures that out for us, and they charge a $15 fee. So we're going to pick fee, and we're going to do fuel tax processing. So we'll add that. And that was $15 on that statement. So we added that. And as you can see, it adds up here the totals in each category for you. And it brings it over and it puts in a summary. So it's going to show our gross income for this statement was $4,300. We got reimbursed $250. Expenses were $67. So our net settlement for this settlement is this here. And you want this number to match up to your settlement statement. Once we've got that in, we're going to save that settlement. And as you can see here, we've already got December in. This is starting for December. It's going to show you as you add statements, this number here will increase and these numbers will change. And it's going to keep a running total for you. So I've gone in and I've put in the whole month of June's settlement statements here. So as you can see, we're on settlements. I've got settlement selected, and that's going to show you what you've already entered in and saved. Now, like I said, as you go through the months, every month is going to have a separate little bar here. So you'd have January, February, March, April, May, June, all the way down through the year. 
So I've done June here. So we'll click on June and that's going to bring up each settlement that you entered for that month. As you can see, we've got one for each week of June. So we'll just pick this first one that I've already got in here. Now, what you can see, you can see everything I've added in for this settlement statement that we got for this particular week. So we've got our line haul here. We've got our deadhead. We've got our fuel surcharge, empty move tolls, and other which I have categorized as detention time or bonus money that we've got paid on jobs. So this is all of our income that we made this week. This is the money that we made the truck for this particular week in June. We go down, reimbursements. We had to buy a part for the truck and that cost $66.46. Now since we drive for an owner, he pays for all the maintenance items on the truck, but this, in this particular instance, it was probably something that happened late at night or on the weekend. We didn't want to bother him to get a credit card number to pay for it or comp check. So we paid for it ourselves and then we sent him the receipt and they're reimbursing us on this settlement. So since that's money they're giving back to us, that's a reimbursement and that's why that's here. As we scroll down, we've got our expenses. Our expenses for this week, we had our occupational insurance, our limited liability, our generator fee, our truck lease. Now. The truck lease, you if you don't drive for an owner and you're an owner operator, that's you don't have to have that. Or say you you're an owner operator and you're leasing your truck through a company, you could put that here. That's an expense. You know, we pay our we're basically leasing our truck from our owner. He owns it, but we he still gets a percentage of what we make the truck. So that's why that's an expense and that's put here. And then load advance. Now this load advance for us, we get paid, Panther pays us 55% of our line haul for every load we do up front. That gets loaded on a card. So that's what this load advance is. Now when I put this in under expenses, this is a retained income expense. It doesn't mean we paid that out, but I have to put this on the settlement just so this number here balances out to the settlement statement I get from our owners. So again, that's not something we paid out, but I have to add it so this number matches to what I have. This is again a retained, I have it under retained earnings. So that's something, um, you may not have that, that is just something we have on our settlement and that's why I have that there. So this is the total for our expenses. So if you come over here again, there's your summary. It shows our gross income, reimbursements, expenses, and our net settlement. Now this being in a retained uh, earnings settlement, let me show you kind of here what I'm talking about. If we add new, like we have the categories here, you'll see this retained earnings. Retained earnings, it's not an actual expense, but I have to put it here to balance my statement. So when I do this, those expenses are not going to be taken out in my profit and loss. This is basically just an accounting that I'm doing here. So again, this number is what you want to match to your settlement statement. So once we have all those numbers in, I've saved that. And again, it brings you back and it shows you what all settlements you have in here. So now I want to talk about expenses. So now we want to add our actual expenses. That's anything, you know, if you purchase items that you, that you can write off, anything you purchase while you're out on the road basically is an expense. So we're going to, that includes fuel, fuel additives, anything like that. You know, you go to Walmart, um, you're buying a coffee pot for the truck. That's an expense. Any, any, um, fuel filters, anything for the truck, that's an expense. So in order for us to put our expenses for the month, we're going to go here to where it says expenses. We're going to click that and then it brings up every month for the year. So let's do June since that's the month we're working with. You'll click June and then once you do that, it's going to start you to where you're going to start adding in your expenses. 
the first page on the expenses is going to be this. You're going to put the miles you ran for June. The beginning of each month, you want to write down your odometer reading so that you have this. As you go, it will add it for you. So let's just say we started our, our odometer reading was 23,947. And we ended with, um, let's say, 33067. That's going to give us our total miles we ran for the month. Then you're going to add how many nights you were away. This is how many nights you were away from home. This is how many nights you're on the road staying in the truck. And the reason you're entering this is because this is going to figure out your per diem that um, is you can deduct on your taxes. So let's say we were um, out for June for 25 days. You're going to put you and your spouse. If you're a solo, of course, you won't have spouse. You'll just have yourself. And then this here is if you say you were home and you had to use your personal vehicle to go do stuff that has to do with your truck. You had to go pick up parts for your truck. You had to go, you know, get something for your truck. You can put the miles you used your personal vehicle for to do that. So once you've got that, those totals in, you're going to hit next. And then the next screen you're going to see, this brings up all the categories for expenses, as you see here. So what I'm going to do, uh, each line on here has a drop down menu, add new, just like on when you did your settlement statements. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to add some of the categories um, under the categories of things that we use for expenses. Let's go through line by line and I'll show you some of the different things. So the first line here is truck payment. This is going to be, of course, for any of you that own a truck and are making a truck payment, you would add that here as an expense. We don't own our own truck, but we do pay a, a percentage to our owner for basically leasing the truck. And I've already put that on my settlement statement. I could put that here if I wanted to, but I've put that on our settlement statement. So I don't want to add that here too, because technically it really isn't a truck payment. We're just leasing the truck. So again, if you own your own truck, you're making a truck payment, you could add that here. Trailer payment. Again, if you're buying a trailer, you would add that here. Um, I don't know any company though in expediting. Usually I think they provide the trailers, but this again, if this isn't just for expediters, this is for any the whole trucking industry. So of course there's people that are buying their own trailers, they would add that here. Accounting. Your accounting thing here is any accounting or legal expenses. And anytime you're filling this out, that you'll see there's these little question marks. You can click on that and that's going to give you a suggested expenses that you can put into this account. So I won't go through every single one because y'all can look at that, but here is a list of some of the stuff that you can put in that. The only thing I really put in here for us is the profit gauges. Um, that's an expense, an accounting expense. That's $19, so I put that there. If you have tax prep fees, you would put that there. Um, anything like that would go there. The next category is communication. This is for any communication costs, cell phones, satellite radio, internet fee, Wi-Fi, anything like that, um, fax charges, phone charges, that's what's going to go into this category here. The next category is fees. This is for any fees you incur, ATM fees, com check fees, uh, com data fees, bank fees, money order fees, anything like that would go into this fee category. Next category is fuel, and I want to talk about this for just a quick minute too. This is, of course, anything fuel related. You know, we, we, your fuel that you pay for the truck, fuel additives, DEF, all of that is going to go in here. Now, in this example I have, I hand keyed this in. If you get the fuel gauges app, you can set this up to automatically take the numbers from your fuel gauges and plug that in here for you automatically so you don't have to do that. Jason's going to do a video on the fuel gauges so you can see how that works. That's another great tool to have. It helps you keep track of your fuel and um, gets you your fuel mileage. It's a really accurate way to do that. So Jason's going to do a video on that and um, 
if you have that along with the profit gauges, that will link up for you and it'll automatically put these numbers in here for you. You don't have to do that as far as the fuel. Now the fuel additives or anything like that that's not straight fuel, it's not going to add. So you'll have to still add that yourself. The next category is insurance. This is any insurance costs, health insurance, um, deadhead insurance, any kind of insurance would go in here. Now, you saw on the settlement statements, I had occupational and limited liability insurance. I have that coming out there, so I'm not going to add it here too. Otherwise, that would be a double expense, and that's not accurate. So if you don't add it on your settlement, and you know, everybody's settlements are different. So your settlement not, may not have it on there. You may have your own health insurance you're paying for, and that's where you would put that here. The next thing is interest. Interest is any business related interest cost, credit card interest that you use for business, equipment loan, you know, truck, trailer, APU, anything, a bank business loan interest would go here. We don't have any of that, so that's blank. Loading, again, this would be for any lumpers fees that you're paying for out of your pocket. Loading, unloading, dock fees, that would go here. Maintenance. Now, Again, we don't own our truck, so we don't pay for really any maintenance on the truck ourselves. Our owner pays for that. The only maintenance item that we pay, would put here is the guard dog. And I'll talk a little bit more about this here in a minute when I talk about tax write-offs. But you can use the stuff you pay. If you have your dog on the truck, that's considered a guard dog. And you can deduct the expenses that you pay for that dog as as maintenance items. Um, some of the other things that go in here, uh, re truck repairs, maintenance, truck washes, towing, tires, oil change, parts, any of that is, is a maintenance expense and would go in here. Next category is office. This is any office expenses, office supplies, paper, ink cartridges, software, postage, P.O. box. If you have a P.O. box, Jason and I have a P.O. box that we pay every six months. You can write that off. That would go in there. Um, any printing for business cards, things like that, that is an office expense and you would put that here. So this month the only expense we had was office supplies and that's what I have there. Physicals. This is going to be any DOT physicals, if there's a drug test, sleep apnea, apnea testing, any kind of um, physical expenses like that is would go here. Rent lease is the next category. Truck rent, trailer rent, storage costs, tools, equipment rental, office rental, garage rental. Again, this, this program is geared for all of the trucking industry. So in expediting, we aren't going to use all of these categories, but you know, you may use this category. Um, we use the category sometimes storage costs. When we're at home, we pay a storage fee to park our truck in a storage area. So that would be a storage fee that we would put there. Next category is scales. This is any scales fees, uh, pre-pass um, and scale tickets. If, you, if you're weighing, you've got to go to the cat scale and weigh your truck. That's an expense you would put here. This month, we only had our pre-pass fee, so that's what I've got there. We don't always have cat scale fees every month. Next category is supplies. This is going to be any supplies you're buying for the truck. So we've got hardware, nuts, bolts, building materials, cleaning supplies, small tools, and expendables. So as you can see, we had some cleaning supplies this month, expendables. I use the expendables account for anything that doesn't fall under under an, another category. Now you could, you know, under supplies, you could list everything out that you wanted to if you wanted to do that by category. I just feel like I already have the receipts for the stuff and if I'm going to get audited, they can go through the receipts and see what I've written off. So I put everything else other than like cleaning supplies in expendables. Um, the next thing, small tools, we had some small tools we bought that month. The next category is tax and license. So again, this is going to be more geared for people that probably have their own authority or possibly running with other trucking companies that don't 
that don't cover this. I know maybe some owner operators in expediting are going to use this. Um, we would use fuel tax because we do get charged fuel tax. Um, CDL fees, if you have to renew something on your CDL, you would put that here. Um, any permits you would have to pay for, things like that would go in your tax and license. Next category is tolls and parking. So this is going to be any toll tickets, you're paying your own tolls, um, easy pass, pike pass, any parking fees, if you have to pay to park your truck, you can deduct that, put that here as an expense. Um, next category is travel, that's going to be hotel, you know, say you're out, you need a hotel, your truck's in the, for repairs, you need to buy, get a hotel for the night, you can write that off, that's a hotel. Um, rental car, showers, airfare, um, idle air, any of that things you can uh, use as an expense and write that off. Next thing is uniforms. That's, you know, some companies required you to, I know FedEx for one, you have to have uniforms and I believe you have to purchase those out of your own pocket. Well, you can write those off as an expense. Rain gear, gloves, work boots, coveralls, safety vests, goggles, hard hat, and even laundry is a write-off, so you would put that there in that expense. Wages, that's going to be, um, that's not your personal wages. That's if you pay wages to someone else. So say you have your truck and you you have another truck that somebody's driving for, uh, for you. You would put those wages there if you have office personnel or salespeople. That's what would go there. So those are the categories, uh, kind of a little brief overview of the categories different categories of expenses that you would enter in here for um, your business expenses. Now, one thing I want to show you before we save this is over here you can see there's some little blue things. Now there's a cheat sheet one here. If you click on that, that's going to bring up a cheat sheet. Basically it's the same thing that I was just showing you if you click the little arrows here like this. It's going to bring up what you can. Here it is. So here's our little expense cheat sheet. And this also gives you a guideline of things that you can write off on your taxes. All of this stuff here is expenses are tax write-offs. So, and you can look at this even, you know, without signing up for the, the, the uh, profit gauges. So you can kind of get an idea of some of the things that you can write off. Um, one thing I want to talk about that a lot of people don't know is in the maintenance category, the cost of maintaining a guard dog. Like I said, if you have a dog on your truck, that is a guard dog. You can, can, can list that as a guard dog. You can write off their food that you purchased them, vet bills, anything having to do with that dog on your truck, you can write off as a maintenance. So I would highly recommend it if and in nothing else, you know, go in, get this expense um, cheat sheet, and I can even leave a link in the description box below so you can kind of look over some of those things um, that you are able to write off. So once so, we've got all of our expenses in and uh, how we want it, we're going to save the month. So you'll click save month. This little taskbar is going to come up, and that's saved. So that's going to bring this back to where you can see every month if you want to click on a particular month. So we've got June, and that's our expenses. Now, we've got our expenses for June. We've got our settlements for June. Now we want to go and see what is this program going to show us. Well, we can go here to a business report. If we click on that, that's going to bring up our business report. Now you can pick a particular month. We only have June in here, so it's only going to let me pick that. You can pick by quarter or you can pick by year. So again, I only have June in here, but if you had more months and clicked picked year, it's going to show you your whole year business report. Now this is really good because it's going to show you pretty much everything, what per mile, what everything is costing you. So if we look up here, this is the summary. So for, for June, we made a total profit here, the miles we drove, and how much profit we're making per mile for that month. That breaks this all down for you. And as you scroll down, you're going to see on your revenue, it breaks it down. Our deadhead, it's costing us 0.5 cents per mile to run with the deadhead that we were paid. It shows you what percentage of revenue that we're getting from this, this here. 
So this is a really, really good tool. It breaks everything down for you so you know what per mile things you're making and what it's costing. So let's, for instance, down here, your fixed cost, your insurance, it's costing us three cents a mile for insurance. It's costing us one cent a mile, or excuse me, a dollar ten a mile for our truck lease for this month. Um, and then it has a total also. So it, this is really, really a good tool, breaks it down for you, you know, your cost per mile, our fuel for this, our fuel total, what it cost us per mile. It was 40 cents per mile that it cost us the, for fuel. Um, you know, you can scroll down, it has all your expenses. This is your total expenses, what it cost you per mile for those expenses, the percent percentage it was, and again, the total. Down at the bottom, it has the summary of everything, your revenue, your expenses, and what your total was for the, the month or year, whichever one you're looking at. So that's really nice, a nice, nice breakdown. Um, you know, these are important numbers you need to know, especially, like I said, even if you don't own your own truck, you're still running a business and you need to know these numbers. And, you know, if you ever decide you want to buy a truck, you need to know these numbers. So then we go back over here where it'll give you a profit and loss statement. So we're going to click on that. That's going to give you, oops, let's go. We don't have for, here we go, year. So again, I've just got June done, but if you had more months, it would, you know, these totals would be for your whole year, or you could look monthly, quarterly, however you want to pull it up. But here in the year, this is going to give us a profit and loss statement. It shows our income. Um, it shows our expenses. And it shows just a summary. You know, this is something you're going to need to have, um, you know, if you're buying a house, if you're you're going to buy your own truck, this is information and reports that people are going to want to see as you being an independent contractor. Um, you're going to have to show these numbers, so this is really important um, to know, and it helps you to know you know what you're making as an independent contractor or business owner. Then it has an option for tax report. This is really nice because at the end of the year, this is what you're going to give your accountant. Whoever you have do your taxes, you can click this tax report and you're going to print this up. You can do it, again, quarterly or yearly, but you're going you're gonna to pull this up and this is going to give you everything that your accountant or tax preparer needs to know to do your taxes. It's going to give them your income. It's going to give them your expenses. Um, it's even going to calculate your per diem, how much they can write off for your per diem. All of that pertinent information is going to be here um, for your tax preparer. So that's a really nice thing to have. Um, this program does give you the option to submit um, your taxes through them, which I believe Jason and I are going to do that this year and, and give them a try and see how that does for us. Um, so that's a really nice thing to have too. Some of the other things on here I just want to talk about briefly. If you go, we did expense, settlement, business report, profit and loss, and tax report. There's also an overview. With this. If you click on the overview, that's basically just going to give you a quick overview of what you've already put in to the profit gauges for your company. Um, that'll show here, it's just a, like I said, an overview. Another thing you've got here, tab you've got is categories. If you click that, it's gonna let you customize your list of, of expenses, um, anything that you've put in here, that's gonna let you customize your list. Since I've just got it on a trial thing right here for this demo, it's not bringing that up, but if, if you actually sign up, it will let you manage and customize the list that you have there. Another thing is down here is settings. You can change settings on here. You're gonna, you can manage trucks, manage the different trucks that you have on here. Um, one of the big things, like I said, that cheat sheet, I would look over that and I'll, again, put a link below that you can look at that. There's also a tutorial that Kevin does that is a great tutorial on the program. If you click that, it's going to bring that up. I'm going to leave a link for this tutorial in the description box below that you, you can view this tutorial 
and see just how it how the program works he does probably a little bit better demonstration than I do so if you click that and watch that tutorial it's gonna give you some more info on the ways to use the program and how to use it and again I'll leave a link for that in the description box below so you can check that out so I hope that explanation um, kind of helped explain the profit gauges to you and I didn't ramble too much. I kind of wanted to go a little in depth, but not too much in depth um, on how to use that program because I feel like, you know, a lot of people may not know it's out there and it took, like I said, it took me and Jason three years to finally find a program that's simple and easy to use and to track our numbers and to know what you know our numbers are and you know $19 a month is nothing a drop in the bucket compared to knowing what your profits are and and how your business is running I'm gonna leave the links in the description box below I'll leave the link to the profit gauges and the tutorial you can view the tutorial without signing up for anything you know there's that 30-day free trial if you want to give it a try so I'll leave all those links in the description box below if you want to check it out look at it yourself um, you know and again you don't have to use that program but I cannot stress enough if you get into this business please track your numbers you've got to know what you're making and what you're spending so now I just wanted to talk real briefly of how I organize our paperwork um, I use two accordion files these right here they're really inexpensive you can get them from Walmart you know they're very inexpensive and the first one I use what I use this for is for any of our paperwork that I send a panther that we're waiting on payment for so really I only use two little slots in here and you can organize your paperwork however you want I'm just showing you how I do mine um, once I've sent once we've completed a job and I've sent pros uh, to panther that we're waiting on payment I staple everything together and I put it in a folder here and then I know that I'm we're waiting on a settlement statement with the payment for those jobs also if there's anything that we've had to pay for um, on the truck that our owner needs to reimburse us for I have a slot in there for that as well and then I have a slot for settlements that I just haven't put into my profit gauges yet so those are the three main things that I put in here the second accordion file is what I use for our monthly paperwork and basically I have it s slotted into I do six months at a time so once the first six months of the year is up I take everything out and I file that keep it um, at home and then I'll start the next six months so right now of course I have July to December in here and I use this for the every month paperwork so if we go to Walmart and we buy stuff you know any receipts that I have for the month of stuff that we need to write off I will slip that into the month that it is so for instance December you know if we went and purchased something um, I put any receipts in here so that I can keep that so at the end of the month when I'm entering all of my expenses into profit gauges I can pull that month out and I can do everything it's all right there for me I know what month it is um, once I've, I'm done for the month you know I have everything stapled together and put in here our settlement statements for the month receipts everything is nice and neat and organized that I can go back if I need to pull a month out and look at something so that's just an easy system that I use in the profit gauges tutorial you'll hear Kevin talk about getting the I think it's a 21 or 24 slot accordion file for expenses and you can do that you know anything that makes your life easier you know do what makes it easier for you this is just what I use and I've found that it's the the least expensive and easiest way to keep track of our paperwork so I hope this video helped. I hope it wasn't too long. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Um, one thing I would suggest, if you do have Sirius or XM Satellite Radio, check out the Road Dog Trucking State channel. I believe on Sirius it's channel 146. 146. They have a lot of good information um, for truckers. Kevin Rutherford's program is really good. He 
is so so knowledgeable on all things trucking he, he talks about a lot of different things on there um, again we're not endorsed by him i'm just simply sharing information that has helped us and could possibly help you as well um if you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, please feel free to comment below. Um, if you can't comment, you can email me. You can send me a message through Facebook, Instagram, any, any of those avenues that you want to use to contact us. Please feel free. That's what we're here for, to help y'all and hopefully make you guys a success, successful. And, you know, this is our way of giving back to y'all. We've been successful um, and a lot of stuff we've had to learn on our own. We really wish that when we first started out, we had a lot of this information uh, to go with. So that's why we want to do this stuff for you, to help you be successful and give back you know, I feel like we're all in the same business and we feel that, you know, this isn't a secret society. You know, we should help one another and that's what we want to do um, with these videos. So if we help one person, then our goal is accomplished. So we really appreciate y'all and look forward for the next video. Thanks a lot, guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.